Welcome to part two of this video. What is the best time of the day to photograph a portrait? I'm Wolf Amri and this time we will cover high noon to golden hour at sunset. It's 1 p.m. high noon. The sun is as high as it gets in our region, we have daylight saving time, and we are back for another series of images. As you can see already, I'm using our styrofoam board because otherwise the images would turn out pretty ugly. Let's start with the ugly ones. Have a look at this image. It can get much worse than that. The sun is very high up and slightly from the side, casting some bad shadows. Again, if it weren't for our light grey dirt road that acts as kind of reflector, this would be even worse. Let's add our on-camera speed light. Not strong enough to compete with the light at noon, even at manual setting, full power. Next, take the flash off camera and bring it closer to Bigot's face. This time from the right, you always want to bring light from the opposite side of the sun because you want to brighten the shadows. Much better. And then the styrofoam board. I'm now using a thicker one because it has become really windy. I'd say that is pretty nice too. But the shadows are still rather distracting. So let's change direction and shoot against the light to see if that gets us better results. First without any fill light, then the on-camera flash, the off-camera flash and the styrofoam board. That wasn't all that great either, so let's try with the sun in our back. Again first the image without any tools, then the on-camera flash, the off-camera flash and the styrofoam board. You see, images at noon don't seem to be all that great, but maybe there is a different solution. We could look for what is called open shade. Open shade is where the subject is in the shade, but in front of it, nothing is blocking the light. So this whole area acts like a big light source, like a huge softbox. Now look at this. This image is just so much better and more flattering than the best image in sunlight. And it doesn't even require any tools. Why does it have to be open shade? Because if your subject is further behind in the shade, the face will become darker. You would have to expose brighter to compensate for that, and that would blow out the background. And it would be a shame to lose that beautiful smooth background. By the way, I will link you to the five factors of background blur in photography at the end of the video. Don't miss it and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Beside that, the light is not as flattering in full shade as it is in open shade. Another option is of course clouds. If you're shooting a wedding, you will soon realize that you don't share the bride's preference for sunny days. Here is a quick shot for high noon with clouds. Not always perfect for landscape photography, but much easier particularly for beginners in regard to outdoor portrait photography. Sorry for the flying hair, but we couldn't get them under control and we wanted to shoot this particular direction. Usually it is of course better to shoot your model facing the wind. Let me give you a short tip in general, but specifically for shooting with clouds. Don't shoot with something dark in the back. That will absorb light. Let's just quickly shoot an image from this point of view with the trees in the back. And then from here, where we have the open space in the back. Again, acting like a big softbox. Particularly check big its eyes. The black background darkens the eye region, not being all that flattering. So try to avoid dark subjects behind the camera. New time, new chance. It's now 5 p.m., the exact opposite to 9 a.m. in our time zone. So 12 hours after sunrise and four hours before sunset. In fact, we could have skipped this shooting. The results will be very similar to 9 a.m. because the sun is equally high up in the sky, just shines from a different direction. But I wanted to introduce you to this new tool. It's a reflector with a golden surface and I'm going to brighten big its face with this reflector. These kind of reflectors have the disadvantage that they can glare your model. You can of course step back a bit, but some people still have issues. 
Another thing about reflectors in general, they are hard to use in windy conditions. Let's start shooting against the light. As I said, the images are pretty much straight out of camera, but let me just lower the highlights from now on. Particularly when shooting against the light, that is often pretty helpful. So here is the portrait straight out of camera, and here I lowered the highlights. Now compare the reflector shot to the one without any tools, then the on-camera flash, and the off-camera flash. I'd say that's a no-brainer. The off-camera flash shot looks nice too, but the image with the reflector looks a lot better in my opinion. What do you think? Don't forget to share your opinion about all the images in the comments. Let's quickly dash through the other directions. The sun from the side first without lights, then the on-camera flash, off-camera flash, and the golden reflector. As you can see, the golden reflector often is kind of too yellow, but they are also available with a silver coating. I will link you to all tools that I use in the description, and I will also post a link to our photography shirt shop. If you want to help us create new content, we'd be happy if you use these links. Next up, the light from the front. We are still at 5 p.m. No additional light, on-camera speed light, off-camera speed light, and the reflector. And now it gets interesting again. The day is ending and we are close to sunset again. You guessed it, golden hour time. This is in fact the most popular time of the day for shooting portraits outdoors. Why? Well, because it is more comfortable to shoot in the evening than early in the morning. You will probably have a hard time getting your models out of bed in the morning. Let's see how our images will turn out. I will start with the sun from the side because I have another cool surprise for you. First without light, with on-camera flash, off-camera flash and golden reflector. Those look pretty cool already but we are at the beginning of the golden hour and the light is still pretty hard. But what if we use something to soften the light? Would that extend the golden hour? Let me introduce you to this cheap 5-in-1 reflector. The heart of it is a scrim, but you can also transform it into a reflector with silver or golden surface. The downside of these is they are close to impossible to use when it is windy. But let's see if we can put them to use in these conditions. Now doesn't that look amazing? Compare that to the shot without any light. The great thing is they are really cheap. They start at roughly 20 US dollars including the scrim and several reflectors. That's why they are often called 5-in-1 reflectors. They extend the golden hour quite a bit. I would say up to an hour. You can of course also use them early in the day but they are rather awkward to hold above your subject and more professional solutions are really much more expensive. Again, check the link in the description. I'd really recommend getting one of these. Collapsed, they are this size, which is pretty neat. Okay, let's continue with golden hour. You know from part one that shooting against the light doesn't look all that great at the beginning of golden hour. So let's just fast forward to 20 minutes before sunset, where it gets a lot nicer. But this is as low as the sun will get here in the evening because behind there are some small hills. So the sun sets a lot earlier than it would if the hills or trees in the back weren't there. What does that tell you? If you're going for that beautiful sun-kissed backlight look we had in the morning, make sure the sun does not disappear behind trees houses or anything else before the actual sunset. If that's not possible in your region, no worries, shoot with the sun from the side after sunset and you will get some beautiful results. This one is before official sunset, right after the sun went behind the hills. That one is at the official sunset and this one 20 minutes after sunset. All three without any light or any shapers. But the light level gets pretty low, resulting in a pretty high ISO again. Please note the settings in the top right. We are at ISO 1000 at f18. That would be ISO 10000 if you only had a kit lens with f56. 
And now listen. To help you get the most out of your shooting time, get one of those 5-in-1 reflectors. They are worth their weight in gold. And they extend the golden hour quite a bit, giving you much more time to shoot. And another thing I recommend is getting one of those really affordable nifty 50 50 mm f1.8 lenses. So after seeing so many images, which one do you prefer? See you in the next video and don't forget to watch the 5 factors of background blur.